At the beginning of these videos, there's a brief disclaimer warning you, the viewer, what's coming up isn't suitable for younger children. And recently, I watched a film from the 1930s, and before it began, a written screen came up explaining that some of the stereotypes and attitudes are outdated and not in keeping with modern standards and values. And that's fair enough. It lets us know what to expect. And you would think that something like that would be enough. But no, this is 2020, where people are going out of their way to be offended, or at least pretend that they're being offended. And the worst of these types of individuals is the woke white person. As a woke white person, you must treat every other white person as if they're a cross-burning racist. And this includes other white people standing up for the rights of people of colour. Because, as a woke white person, you must denounce them for fighting a battle which is not theirs, whilst hypocritically doing exactly the same thing. And at present, many of the wokest white people work in the media, where they are at pains to point out how offended they're pretending to be. Probably because they're worried about losing their jobs. And it's for this reason that a couple of months ago, the 1939 classic Gone with the Wind was pulled from many streaming services and only reinstated when it began with a lengthy warning. For me, all it needed, well, it didn't actually need anything because most of us, the vast majority of people, can comprehend that a film that was made 81 years ago will have different values and standards to the modern world. But at most, all it needed was, this film's set in the American Civil War, slavery and shit. So it comes as no surprise that another classic film has come in for scrutiny from those brave enough to break cover from their designated safe spaces or stop crying for five minutes. So now, if you want to watch Mel Brooks's classic comedy, Blazing Saddles, from 1974 on HBO's streaming service, you are forced to endure a three-minute miniature lecture explaining the plot and the context in such a manner that assumes the audience... We, the viewers, are too stupid to understand it because, as we know, Blazing Saddles is full of racism and racist language. The lady who gives the presentation is the Chicago professor Jacqueline Stewart, and I'm sure that she's a lovely person. Albeit, she looks like MC Hammer has used a gender swap app on his mobile phone. Now, I'm not a professor. However, I can state categorically that Blazing Saddles isn't a racist film. It's a spoof movie, a parody, a send-up, and Mel Brooks made a lot of these. In Young Frankenstein, he ripped the piss out of the classic horror genre. He also made films like High Anxiety, Spaceballs, and Robin Hood Men in Tights, and in Blazing Saddles, he was mocking the classic westerns of the 50s and 60s, as well as Hollywood itself. These classic westerns usually had white cowboys as the heroes, and other white actors made up to look like Native Americans as the villains. These people who had the audacity to fight back and not submit to genocide. Black people very rarely featured in classic westerns, and when they did, it was all very amicable. Nothing to do with America's racist past and the racist problems that the US was still having in the mid-1970s when the film was released. But progressives social justice warriors and woke people all see the same one problem with Blazing Saddles. Some of the white characters constantly use the N-word, so it has to be racist! When white people use the N-word, that is extremely racist. But we have to delve below the surface a bit more to understand it in context. The two main characters were Sheriff Bart and the Waco Kid, played by Cleveland Little and Gene Wilder. But the actor originally picked to play the sheriff was Richard Pryor. And as we later saw, Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder, when working together, made some of the best comedy films of all time. Now, Pryor didn't get the role because of controversy at the time surrounding his stand-up material, but he did remain on board the project as a writer. For me... Richard Pryor was possibly the greatest stand-up comedian who ever lived. And he dealt with racism head-on, and we see that in the script for Blazing Saddles. It's Pryor's genius at making racism look stupid. 
And that's what progressives always miss. Because they're so busy complaining and fucking crying about everything, they miss that despite the overt racism, it's the racists themselves who are always the butt of the joke. We, the audience, are laughing at the racists, not with them. We see them as backward, bigoted, simple-minded people. A point made by Gene Wilder as the Waco Kid. You've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. These are people of the land. The common clay of the New West. You know. <laughs> I'm sure that right now there's some social justice warrior crying because the term moron is an ableist slur. And if that's you, just have a fucking day off. Throughout the film, Mel Brooks and his writing team continued to make fun of racists. Hey boys! Look what I got here! Hey, where are the white women at? Yeah, that is pretty. I like that. And remarkably, the people who are saying that the film is racist and have got this disclaimer put at the start of the movie only took 46 years to do so. Now, progressives always seem to miss the point. And I believe that's because they're too busy trying to outwoke one another rather than actually caring. And the thing is, if you want to defeat racism or sexism or bigotry, one of the most powerful weapons in your arsenal is laughter. When you laugh at an extremist, they lose their power. That's why following terrorist attacks, there's always loads of jokes. But another film has fallen foul of the woke brigade being pulled from an American film festival after complaints from anti-police protesters. This film is described as racist, portraying Hispanic people as criminals, as well as reinforcing negative stereotypes of African Americans, promoting a police state, police brutality and excessive use of force. Promoting white supremacy, the patriarchy and shaming single parent families traumatising children through threats and verbal violence and enforcing the idea that school may lead to prison. And the name of the film in question is the 1990 family comedy Kindergarten Cop. Protesters said that Arnie's foray into comedy was on a par with the 1915 silent movie The Birth of a Nation. I've not seen the film The Birth of a Nation all the way through. It's over three hours long and it's important to mention it did pioneer many film techniques which are still in use today. However, it is an extremely racist film and I can't draw the comparison between a family comedy about a police officer going undercover as a junior school teacher and a movie where there are white actors wearing blackface portraying African Americans as brutal savages before being killed by the heroes of the piece, the KKK. I mean, look at these two images. Do they appear to be conveying the same narrative? Of course, as time moves on, things will only get worse. Woke white people will find more and more things to pretend they're offended by, and protesters of all races will insist that more and more things are banned. So if you are among the ranks of the Woke Brigade, why not take a break, put on blazing saddles, and in the three minutes that this mini lecture's playing, make yourself a cup of tea or coffee, sit down and have a fucking good laugh. Thanks for watching.